So now we're going to get into talking about specific transformations and we're going to start off by talking about the vertical stretch or compression of a function and the whether it's reflected in the x-axis or not. So as a review from the previous video, what did we say happens? We have a parent function f of x and then it undergoes a transformation and turns into this a f bracket k x minus d close bracket plus c where the a k d and c are just any number. Now whether a function is vertically stretched or compressed or reflected in the x-axis depends on the value of a. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through a bunch of cases for which the value of a can take and we're going to describe what each case means. So the first case you could run into is if the a value is greater than 1. And if it's greater than 1, what that means is that we took the function and vertically stretched it by a factor of a. So for example, if we have, for all of these examples that I'm going to do, I'm going to use the parent function x squared. So if we take our parent function x squared and then put a 3 in front of it or transform it into 3x squared, the a value is greater than 1, this 3, so we would say that the function is vertically stretched by a factor of 3. And how that would look graphically, so this red parabola here represents our parent function x squared. And if we were to take 3x squared and graph it, perhaps make a table of values and then graph it on the same Cartesian plane, it would look something like this. it would be more skinnier, it'd be vertically stretched. So this new parabola that we drew represents 3x squared, the one that we took and vertically stretched, and the red parabola represents the base parent function of x squared. Moving on to the next case, if the a value is just 1, then there is no transformation, then the parent function stays as is, it's just x squared. If the a value is between 0 and 1, then it's vertically compressed by a factor of a. So for example, if we have, compared to our parent function x squared, if we have y is equal to 1 half x squared, notice that the 1 half represents the a value, and the a value in that case is between 0 and 1. So we would say that our parent function x squared is vertically compressed by a factor of 1 half. And how it would look graphically, so again, the red uh, parabola here represents the base function x squared. And the parabola on the outside of it, if we were to make a table of values and graph this 1 half x squared, it would look something like that. It would be on the outside of our parent function x squared. So thinking about it, it's we took our function x squared and we vertically compressed it so it kind of turned fatter. When we vertically stretch a function it becomes skinnier, when we compress it it becomes fatter. Moving on to the next cases, if the a value is 0 then we just have no function because the whole thing would turn into 0 and we would just have y is equal to 0. So there's no case for that. Now if a is between negative 1, if it's greater than negative 1 but less than 0, then it's vertically compressed by the absolute value of a and it's also reflected in the x-axis because now the a value would be negative. So for example, y is equal to negative one-half x squared. We would say that this function is vertically compressed by a factor of one-half which is the absolute value of negative one-half and it's reflected in the x-axis because the a value is negative. So how that would look graphically, again, the red parabola represents our parent function x squared, and this other parabola here represents this negative one-half x squared. You can make a table of values, and it would look something like that. So notice how it's vertically compressed, so it's wider, and it's reflected in the x-axis. So we took the parent function, reflected it in the x-axis, so now it points down, 
and it's wider. So vertically compressed and reflected in the x-axis. Now for these last two cases, I erased the previous cases because I was running out of room, but you can keep adding these cases to the bottom of the previous cases that we did. So the next case is when a is equal to negative one. Well, if a is equal to negative one, there's neither a vertical stretch or compression, there's only a reflection in the x-axis. And the only function that would uh, correspond to this case is y is equal to negative x squared or y equals negative one x squared, the a value would be negative one. And how that would look graphically, so the red uh, function represents our original uh, base parent function x squared and the transform function, the negative x squared, would look something like this. It's neither vertically stretched or compressed, it's just reflected in the x-axis. And for our final case, when a is less than negative one, what that means is that the function is vertically stretched by a factor of absolute value of a, so we take that negative a and turn it into a positive when we're talking about the factor, and it's reflected in the x-axis. So for example, if we have y is equal to negative three x squared, the a value is negative three, so it's less than negative one, so we know that it takes this case. So we took our original function x squared, we vertically stretched it by a factor of three and reflected it in the x-axis. So how that looks graphically, Again, the red parabola represents our base function x squared and negative three x squared, if you were to make a table of values and graph it, it would look something like this here. So it's vertically, it's reflected in the x-axis and it's vertically stretched. So it's a little thinner than our original function x squared. So it underwent two transformations. Again, it got vertically stretched and it got reflected in the x-axis.